Do you suffer from alarm fatigue? Well, four out of five facilities managers and HVAC controls professionals do. So what exactly is this insidious disease and how can you cure it? Hi, I'm Eric Stromquist with ControlTrends.com and Stromquist and Company. And on this week's episode, we're going to dive deep into alarm fatigue and how you can solve it. Our guest this week is a young integrator out of Atlanta, Brent Burroughs. He's a young gun. So Brent's going to be with us the whole show. It's going to be fantastic. We get Brent's perspectives, which are just absolutely stellar. So the other thing you need to know is that Control Trends on our YouTube channel, Control Trends Smart Buildings YouTube channel, we've started a new video series called HVAC Tech School. And it's designed specifically for the HVA technician. And we get into everything from how to size a valve to how to troubleshoot a regulator and topics specifically for the HVAC technician. So take a minute, subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, relax, enjoy the show. The following is a presentation of the Control Trends Podcasting Network. Here we go. Kind of just, oh, you know, most HVAC guys are ex-convicts anyway, right, Brent? <laughs> All right, here we go, boys. One, two, three, boom, boom, boom. Hi, welcome to Control Talk Now, your smart building's video cast and podcast for the week ending March 24, 2019. This is episode 308, where we talk about all things smart controls, HVAC controls, and pretty much anything else we want to. And I tell you what, I've got two legends today. One is the one you know, Ken Smyers, the man, the myth, the legend, the control man from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And joining us today is a legend in his own right, young gun, Brent Burles from Atlanta, Georgia. Brent is with Intech. He's one of the rising stars in the controls industry. And if you were at the 2018 Control Trends Awards, you know that Brent was inducted into the Young Guns class of 2019. So, fellas, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Eric. Uh, Yeah, uh, you took away all my firepower. I was supposed to get some of that introduction on Brent Burroughs. But, uh, yeah, we got a real live Young Gun here. And uh, it's so good to see the – Brent looks like the type of guy that's going to be taking our place one day. So he's he's learning. He's He's got some great background. He's a true integrator. Does everything from the programming side of it, knows about it, the analytics, but he could do he could do the terminations too and, and, and make stuff work. So that's uh, welcome to the show, Brent. It's good to welcome, have somebody knows what they're talking about on the show every once in a while. I really appreciate it, guys. And uh, yeah, actually the only real thing I have in my office, uh, <laughs> kind, of the, kind of the home office here. Uh, you know, I may have to make up some more awards for myself or some certifications. <laughs> well, no, young gun's pretty much all you need, man. And now if you're 60 in a young gun or 65 like Ken Sinclair in a young gun, then you're doing really, really good. Okay, Brent, man, we're, we, you know, we're talking about young guns. And, man, one of the raps that the young guns, the millennials get is, man, they just can't be on time. I noticed you're here, but tell us about our other guest. Where, where is he? Who else is uh, supposed to be on the show with us? Uh, I guess that's uh, going to be uh, – no, my new co-host Aaron Gorka. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where Aaron is. You know, m- maybe they don't do daylight savings time in Canada or s- some <laughs> different things. He didn't. He didn't change his clock around. Right. Well, in fairness to Aaron, man, he has been traveling a lot. Aaron Gorka from Ant Technology is one of the hardest young working guys in the industry. Uh, he is uh, does the podcast Next Generation Innovation. And Brent, I guess the big news is uh, you're going to be joining Aaron as his co-host. Yeah, um, so I'm, I had been uh, reading some stuff lately, and, you know, I listen to you guys on uh, Control Talk Now on iTunes, and I'd always wanted to get into podcasting, and uh, and it just so happened, I, I was featured on, a, on an episode um, a few months back, and just really enjoyed it. I've worked with Aaron. We actually use Ant Technologies um, to do uh, track our project side, and uh, so me and him get along, and, you know, we vibe well, and so I reached out to reach out to you and was like, "Hey, what do you think of this idea?" And uh, and you were all for it. Gave Aaron a call. He he was excited to have a co-host. So that's what we're going to be doing. 
Well, I can't wait for you guys to, 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 to work together. Aaron's just doing a fantastic job uh, so far. And it is kind of fun with the co-host, you know. So the, the, but if you're going to get good at this, you have to practice saying this right off the bat. The man, the myth, the legend. Let me hear you say it because if something ever happens to me, you know, it's going to be between you and Aaron to step in. But Kenny is very picky about who gets to be his uh, – just to introduce him. So one time, Brent, you're on. Here's your audition. Uh, here's the audition. All right. We're on control talk now, you know, in, in memory of the late, great Eric Stromquist, um, you know, he's in a better place now, but I am your new co-host and I'm going to introduce the man, the myth, the legend, Ken Smyers. Take it over, Kenny. Well, thank you. Um, Brent, that was awesome, man. You passed Dude, it. He might, he might not even wait for me to die, man. He might just. You guys, did you guys rig this up beforehand? Did you just pull it off right now? No, he might, he might give me the boot right after the show, dude. That was a little too good, Brent. But, uh, well, listen, dude, before we get into more of the show, tell us about what you do in, in Intech. I've known your dad for years, and uh, you guys have a fabulous company. But, but talk a bit about Intech and what you guys do. Uh, so, Intech, we're a. Uh, kind of a, a local, regional, regional and uh, national company uh, have handled, you know, many national accounts over the years. Uh, so we have that side of the business. And then we have more of our, uh, what I'd call our local and core business here in Atlanta. Um, we specialize in commercial office space, um, but, you know, also do, you know, hospitals, industrial work, really anything you need. Um, we can provide the service and the expertise to work in those areas. So we do anything ranging from, you know, mechanical service, installation, retrofits, um, and then, you know, hopping into the controls, the building automation, you know, HVAC, lighting integration, all that stuff. And we even do system access controls everywhere. So Intech really is a great one-stop shop to fill all your building needs. Yeah, you know, one of the things that uh, I, I, I saw on the site and we talked offline there is analytics uh, and the impact. We have one of our posts that we'll be talking about here uh, as we review the posts. So you're actually uh, delving into analytics now. Tell us about some of your experiences so far. What do you think? Is that is that the next great uh, gold mine to dig into? Well, analytics, you know, it's, it's been around um, in, in the HVAC industry. For, for a little while now, and it's kind of, you know, it's interesting, you'll go to these conferences, or, you know, you'll read stuff, and you've got, you know, you got kind of these bud, buzzwords, one of the big ones that, and, you know, when I kind of look at buzzwords, there are a lot of terms that people throw around, but then you, they'll just kind of throw it around, and they don't know the meaning of it, <laughs> and they're just yeah. like, oh, yeah, IOT, an analytics, and uh, and you'll just <laughs> see them, they, they pop up a lot at conferences, but, uh but, you know, really uh, been seeing analytics get hammered for the last couple of years now. And basically, you know, w one of the great things, you know, that you can kind of, they're doing in the industry now, you know, with, you know, everything being more standardized, like, you know, BACnet, LAN, um, you know, different protocols come in, normalizing the data. And then, uh, you know, a huge one that I know you guys have talked a lot about and they got the big conference coming up is Haystack. Um, you know, basically being able to take all the data in your building, you know, sensor information, uh, whether it's, you know, discharge temps, you know, zone temps, uh, you know, all those things in your building, lighting levels, all this stuff, and take it in and get that data. So you kind of get to that point with an integration and it's like, okay, well, let's just say, you know, I got a 10 story building. Uh, so, you know, got 10 air handlers, chiller plant, and then, you know, depending on the level of integration, let's say I've got 20,000 data points in my building. You know, what are you really doing with that? They're there, they're, at, they're acting out there and they're just doing their thing. But, you know, unless you can hire somebody 24 seven to watch those sites and be like, oh, this is doing this, this is doing this. Um, it's gonna, it's, it's hard to keep track of it. You kind of get into this, uh, you know, very responsive state. Um, you know, trying to manage the building. It's not forward thinking. It's not really effective. So what analytics comes in and does is it basically, it's like, you know, <laughs> it, it is, it's, it's a 24, it's 24 seven program that looks at your building, looks at your data and can alert you to the issues going on. And then also in some cases make responsive rights back to correct issues. Right. Um, right. So, 
No, that's well said, Brent. Well said. And, and, and I think one of the things that Kenny and I sort of picked up early on, and, and you, we were talking about SkySpark a little bit because that's what you're working with. But, uh, you know, for years, back even when your dad and I were doing this stuff, you know, those old guys, I mean, you could always alarm, right? But it got to right. the point that you had so many alarms. It's like my emails. You just become null and void to me. You just don't pay attention to it anymore. So it seems like one of the things analytics allows you to do is to write rules, for example. So if something goes out of temperature for a while, you could give it X period of time before it sends out an email or an alarm. You could also maybe even send a command to say, hey, try to reset it or whatever before you do that. And so are you finding that that's driving some of your customers' interest into it? Or, or what sort of things, when, when they say analytics, like it's a buzzword, but when they come to you, or do they actually know what they want? Or it's just, hey, I want an analytics package, and you sort of have to talk them through it. Um, so it, it's interesting. You were talking about, uh, my dad, uh, uh, actually met with him this week and he brought up some of the alarming going on from the nineties. And he was, uh, so, uh, I, I won't name him, but you know, big retail client. Um, and they, you know, obviously they have sites all around the country and, uh, they have like a fax machine that sat in the side of this room and this thing continually like it just right. put out reports. And I think they actually set up a system where it just like fed into like a dumpster or a shredder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's all it did for 24 hours a day. And they were like, uh, he was like, what is that? They were like, Oh, that's the, uh, that's the alarm. Yeah, recipient. That was the old dot matrix. Yeah. I remember those things. Yeah. It, it was, uh, yeah. Uh, but you know, the, uh, to your Eric's point, uh, I, I think, um, we've seen several, uh, Programs now coming out, like Controls Con is coming up with Detroit, uh, with the Co Cochran Supply, and, and Scott Cochran and his team put together this thing, Raven, where you could really, you could eliminate anything you didn't want to hear, all the chafe, you know, and just, just get to the nuggets that you needed to know. And then they, they tamed that down so much that it would be in a proximity uh, presentation. So if you, you came just to say chafe, Kenny? Chef, well, me, chef, 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 chef. Yeah. Hey, well, let's get that right. We don't want people to think. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. We got, we got that the cleaned wheat, up. The wheat right. and the chef. I'm sorry. I couldn't. Yeah. You know, hey, you know, I'm spitballing here too. But you want to tell us about uh, chafing or no? Go ahead. Shaving. <laughs> shaving. Oh, shaving. Shaving. Um, so the the thing that uh, that Scott Cochran believed in is that, that to Eric's point that we're so overwhelmed with this this data being pushed at us that we ignore it. Now we have we have all these yeah. self defense mechanisms. We turn off our phones so we don't have to hear the pinging. You know, and, and then, but then you really could miss that one really important alarm because you're so, you know, unconditioned to, to respond to it. And to your point, like the, uh, that stuff became packing. They had so, generated so much, I thought matrix printing stuff that not only did it shred, but then that shredding material went back and got recycled <laughs> back in the, in the shipping department. But um, so, yeah, so, so this, uh, the Raven thing was a real clever uh, response so that not only did you restrict the amount of alarms you got, but they were, they were sent specifically to who needed it and it reduced right. all that additional traffic so yeah Brent it's a cool app if you haven't seen it it actually works like with you know notifications on your iPhone and stuff like that mm -hmm. so you can just set up just the notifications you want to see so uh, Scott Cochran's one clever dude and controls con is going to be a great conference and uh, we, we actually have a discount code for that don't we Kenny so we sure do if you put in control trends when you register and, and put in uh, control trends you get a 10% discount and uh, that we'll and another... chafing and you'll get 15 but <laughs> All right, Eric, you, you know it's just a matter of time for you blunder, and it's going to cost you, baby. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But, that, that should be an alternate co uh, code word. You get 20% off if you mention chafing. Cause that's you right. See, Brent, you're going to be a great co-host. He's good. I like it, yeah. <laughs> He's picking right up on this. So. But, uh, but so what else? So the analytics, are these primarily the facilities managers asking for this, or is it going up higher? Because I know, you, you know, Dana and, and the rest of your, down to the rest of your sales staff deals at the sea level suite a lot is it mainly being pushed down from the c-level suite or consulting engineers asking for it or or how is this even coming into consciousness well it's uh it, it's interesting so i'm gonna go back um uh, real quick to the original uh question that that you asked and and mention something that uh you know it kind of all goes along with uh with the app you're talking about the raven you know the alarms um uh, and you mentioned it you know just kind of getting you know pounded with all this data and it really does you know whether it's you know because I'll, I'll copy myself on the emails most of the time for the alarms and you know sometimes it'll just I, I think I went through this morning there was a point that went in and out of alarm I had to delete like 600 emails Jeez. so 
So uh, it, it, you get into the point of getting alarm fatigue. So yeah, so in the process, let's just say that you have something that, that does, does alarm and you get, you know, over the course of, you know, three or four months, 600 emails, you're going to be like, oh no, just delete all those. Don't worry about that. And sandwiched in there and one or two of those yeah. was, it was important data. So that's why it's important. You know, when you're doing the integration. It was the free stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, make, right. make, make sure you set up, you know, your alarms and your notifications. So there are going to be alarms that happen, but, you know, maybe just only send out, you know, prioritize with your alarm classes. Um, but, but then to get back to, uh, to what you're mentioning about what level do you kind of see the request from analytics coming? Um, I, I think it, it really depends. Uh, so a lot of what we, uh, we deal with, um, customers we deal with in the Atlanta market, um, you know, we'll go into existing buildings and whether, you know, we're upgrading them from, you know, DDC from the nineties or just straight pneumatics and everything, uh, you just hit their different levels of involvement from, you know, different companies and, you know, different positions. So, all right, you know, I've, I've got to figure out what's going on and I cannot, I don't have the time to pour through this site and I don't want to, you know, pay a monitoring company, you know, right. just every, every, every month. Cause you know, that's great. You know, <laughs> That there were a few people that we followed around in Atlanta or would go to, and they were just like, "Oh yeah, we pay this company two thousand dollars a month to just watch this." It's like, but it takes wow. you six hours to get them on the phone, and then sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. But uh, they'll always let you know when that check's not in the mail. That's um, well right. Said. The um, the analytic thing that, 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 that I thought uh, one of the big impulse or impacts was when Niagara, when the Jaces started coming with 25 free analytic points to get you a taste of it, you know, and then we started to see people dabble at it, but we really didn't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, takers. And then once they got into it, uh, so it all became, you know, uh, basically about templating it. But uh, the uh, Phil, uh, fearless Phil Zito had a really nice uh, extract on when he did a synopsis on N4 about what he said that uh, what they added to N4 and, and uh, to analytics 2.0 was that um, the main capabilities were the pre-existing analytic data model it was in it was inherent embedded a base algor, uh, alg, uh, algorithm library and then a real time on premise analytic control so one of the things that we saw now was that people if they wanted to start to dabble they got a good free taste or a complimentary taste of analytic points that they could take a couple of these points and do exactly what you're saying pick out the top uh, maybe ones that you're you get in those multiple alarms you know and then have it so that it, you could control the amount of alarms that you got from that point. So, uh, but again, it's, it's still, it's just touching the, uh, the, you know, the, the top of the, the iceberg. Right. Because uh, I mean, Sky Foundry, of course, was the, 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 the industry leader. I mean, they, they basically defined analytics to us. No, no, it's cool. But Kenny, I got a question for you. I think we might have a new vocab word here. And I wonder if you've heard Chef. this before. No, 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 no. I'm not even going. Alarm fatigue. That's the first time I heard that. Have you heard the term alarm fatigue before? Well, I, I, actually, I have. It's, but I, I hadn't heard it said in that perspective, that context. But you're right. Well, I mean, so I, th I think Brent is co-hosting. He's got his first new phrase, alarm fatigue. Okay. So we were going to give you a nickname or get you a T-shirt to be Brent Burroughs Alarm Fatigue. So. I did write that down, though. So no, that's a great one, Brent. I yeah. like that a lot. So, Brent, for our integrators out there who maybe have not gotten into analytics or, you know, Sky, specifically Sky Foundry, um, kind of walk them through. I mean, how difficult is it, is it to get started with it? Because I know there are a lot of integrators out there that have heard of analytics and maybe, you know, think they can do it or don't think they can do it, but what do they need to know? If, if you're just starting from scratch, you're, you're a systems integrator and you haven't worked with analytics, sort of walk them through it. Uh, so obviously, you know, um, like the, the SkySpark, um, SkySpark software, you know, like anything else, uh, to be able to sell it, you know, you have to get signed up with a distributor, all that. Um, so, you know, first need to find somebody that, that can uh, distribute it. And it's really important, you know, when you're kind of going into a new software, I believe this with anything is to make sure that you've got a good support channel, um, you know, like in, in between you and then, you know, and, and Sky Foundry, which I'll say for Sky Foundry, their online database of like help documentation, everything is phenomenal. 
um, I have used that a ton. It, it'll actually basically walk you through um, setting up site, uh, comes with a great demo site so you can look at how everything's set up and then, you know, reverse engineer it. Because, you know, as a, as a systems integrator or, you know, anything else, it's, it's similar, you know, it's, it's just like physically, you know, kind of like building an engine or something. How do you really figure out how an engine works? Well, t take one apart and put it back together and you're going to have a good idea of what those components do, where they go and everything. Same thing applies to the software. So, uh, so analogy. getting started there. Go ahead, Kenny. No, that's a good analogy, and, and you know, and I think that's where you talk about the division of labor and and the and the support structure. You know, some of the some of the great products and some of the great applications that have failed uh, did so not because it wasn't a great application; it was because people didn't take to it well. They didn't have a support structure. They didn't have that engaging support that you're talking about. And some of these new people, uh, new products and solutions we see coming in, especially in North America, you know. The, the contracting mentality is they want it so they can understand it. And they want to be able to do that physically, uh, create an analogy. So this is how you put it together. This is how you take it apart. And by the time you do that, you know the steps are, are all procedural and the methodology is very consistent. Mm -hmm. And then you get really good at it. I think the the commitment to Sky Foundry is significant. But once you get there, it, you've got it's money well spent and you just it's a gold mine. Right, and Kenny, well, listen, and Brett, this is a term that uh, you're going to probably have to do with Aaron Gorka called stable datum, right? Because we is, we're assuming that our entire audience listening to the show right now understands what Sky Foundry and Sky Spark is. So, Kenny, if you don't mind, would you just give our audience just a quick overview of what it is? Because I think people have heard of analytics, they've heard of data, but they may or may not have heard of Sky Spark uh, if they don't listen on a regular basis. Kenny, let's give our audience a little stable datum on exactly what Sky Foundry is and what Sky Sparks are. All right, well, uh, you know, I, I would recommend everybody to Google, or not Google, but to come to our website, Control Trends, and then just take a look at John Petsy or look at Sky Foundry in there because we have multiple videos of John explaining it, what it is through interviews or whatever. But essentially, the synopsis of Sky Spark is an open analytic platform from Sky Foundry that automatically analyzes building data from sensors, automation systems, meters, and other smart devices to provide useful building insights. SkySpark insights help facility managers, building owners, and business managers identify trends, issues, faults, correlations, and opportunities for cost reductions and building improvements. Uh, and then also the, the, the growth of it, you know, so we were asking Brent about, you know, who wants it and, and how is it implemented? And it comes from all different, uh, you know, dimensions. It doesn't come from just consistently the COO or the CTO or, you know, a smart building owner. It comes from people that have problems that need them fixed. So just to give you an idea, there's more than 10,000 facilities around the globe that are using SkySpark right now to analyze buildings data over 650 million square feet of buildings. Imagine that. And they went over a billion, by the way. That's where they're on. But commercial buildings, apartment buildings, apartment complexes, hotels, resorts, data centers, industrial facilities, educational campuses, government buildings, large multi-use retail spaces, and other large complex facilities. But if you remember, the one crazy thing about it is we start small with one building using SkySpark and SkyFoundry, or analytics, you know, because there'll be other versions of analytics. But in order to get to the smart cities, you got to start small. It's a modular thing. So you go from one building, building to the time. Exactly. But the, this whole thing crescendos into a smart city where you're, yeah. everybody is getting that data. They're knowing what usages are. They know where occupancies are. They're yeah. knowing when they have a bad, uh, you know, power. Right. Right. And, and I think, you know, again, John Petsy used to be president of Tritium, one of the brightest guys on the planet. A great drummer, too. Buddy Rich has nothing on John Petsy. But, uh, you know, early on when SkySpark first came out or SkyFounder first came out, it was kind of cost prohibitive almost just simply because to connect the data points together really required somebody to go in and link this to this to this to this to this. But that's all changed. Now it's gotten super, form, super, super price competitive, Kenny, because of, drum roll, <laughs> Haystack. Can I, I, tried to, I tried to do the dumb roll. Uh, oh, you tried? Oh, dumb, you dumb roll. Dumb, a dumb, dumb roll. roll. I, I did this. Is that dumb. a new vocab word? Dumb roll. <laughs> <laughs> I need another cup of coffee. I think. <laughs> no, I like the dumb roll though. That's a good one, buddy. That's a good one. Well, yeah, I know you wanted that, and and yeah, because uh, again, we're trying to uh, promote Project Haystack to the best of our abilities and really get the you know 
the patrol trans community excited about it, but I think we're getting other people excited about it. I think there's people that are learning outside of the HVAC and BAS industry that understand that the haystack tagging, for instance, we had uh, Samtha uh, from uh, the smart car. Like, don't trick me again here. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm not, I'll go say them. What was her name again, Kenny? We need first and last name for stable. Yeah, <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Go, to, go, 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 go to the Control Trends website, highlight her name, and then have Google pronounce it for you. Jamsey. Jamsey. Yeah, the yeah. futurist. Right. Well, anyhow, she <laughs> took the, the haystack tagging to heart and thought, you know, that it was an, you know, it, it's, it's just absolutely vital to eliminate all the friction and bring data to, you know, where it belongs as quickly as yeah. possible. And so, then that there should be so cooperation. You ready, for, you ready for an analogy? Yeah. So. Haystack tagging is to Sky Foundry and every other analytics or control system as gasoline is to a car. What do, what do you think, Rick, Brent? You got to go, go, ooh. How about as, how about is like, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm, I mean, you know, an, another analogy, I, I think one of the <laughs> great things about having Haystack is it's basically this organization that says, you know, Hey guys, instead of re reinventing the wheel, here you go. We're going to give you the tools or instead of making all your own custom stuff, here's the tools to do it. Nice. Uh, you know, it, it'd be kind of like every kind of like, you know, <laughs> I guess it'd be, it's, you know, not using haystack tagging. I feel like doing your analytics to standardize it. It's kind of like going back to the, you know, dark ages or the prehistoric times of you know where you just have different tribes and they have like all their own forms of communication like you know i don't it's i don't know like, like most marriages so <laughs> <laughs> well you know i, I think that's gonna that's gonna work there uh brent because Brent's um like when you, if you hear john petsy talk about it, he actually gets mad he'll, he'll start out real calm and mellow and he'll, he'll start saying but his patience in the industry i think is, is waning because it, it's a choice and, and you know again a lot of people have you know big legacy investments and they've got you know they've got corporations to run and, and they they really truly have to control the rate of adoption and 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 it, it is it's got, money comes into it i mean we had that guy from uh, sweden tell us you know all these things could have been fixed many 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 years ago if there wasn't uh, you know an economic reason not to do it so brent it brings, our, it done, have an economic reason to get them done. right no, hang on. Brent needs to know this because I know you're a listener, Brent, but you, Kenny, this is the part of the show where we come up with our conspiracy theories. Okay. Okay. So, um, no, no, not really. No, 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 no. no. And, and I want to do something right now too. It's Sudha Jamthi. So it's S not Sudha. S-U-D-H-A. Sudha Jamthi. J-A-M-T-H-E. You got the Jamthi right. This Sudha. Not Sudha. <laughs> Hey, you know yeah. what? I, I practice. Uh, Brent, why don't you want come on? Say it, Brent. You Where know what? It? I'm going to sit down on this one because I, I haven't had a chance to write it down and sound it out. But right. I think this is like a good idea for like a new bit. You should do Ken, Kenny's word of the week <laughs> and, and, and put, put put a word down and then oh, have him like yeah. phonetically sound it out. So Kenny, that. Kenny, no, no, we got one this week. <laughs> Kenny's word of the week: chafe. <laughs> chafe. Isn't that when, like you rub your skin, you rub your face with a scarf or something, and you shake your skin. Face yeah, off. yeah. Or yeah, yeah, I think he yeah. used it in a different context today, which is like the data was shaved off of the. Skin. No, no, it was to do with the wheat and, and, and the other stuff. The wheat, know? the wheat's in the shaft, not the shave. Well, we're actually oh, we, we're, what? we're not going there. Let's get back to. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Sound like <laughs> I don't think you blew that one yourself. Those, those two words oh, are a little too closely oh, related. Oh, was, that well, a, was that a Freudian slip? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah, the, I think so. I have a lot of those. <laughs> so look, it's a, it's a good sign. That means that uh, your brain's working. Uh, okay, so let's get back to Brent. Meanwhile, back to Brent. So Brent, again, speaking to integrators out there that maybe haven't taken the plunge to do an analytics and specifically Sky Foundry, sort of walk them through the step. You know, they can call Ken or Eric. That should be your distributor. And after you get with your distributor, what happens next? Uh, so after you get with your distributor, uh, hopefully the, they can set you up on Sky Foundry, um, so you can get into the resources. You can access. Um, it, it's pretty cool once you get every, everything set up. Um, Sky Spark actually has a demo, and all you have to do is just pretty much upload the demo, and then you can go through all the steps. Uh, all, all the steps they give you online. They give you like a five-part um, kind of do-it-yourself 
um, you know, set up the data points, you know, add the equipment, add the points, add the tags, go, go view the data and do everything. So you get practice, like kind of like we talked about putting something together. So you get practice doing that. And then you start going, all right, I, I can see this. I, I can see how this will work. Uh, and then after you do that, um, you're going to want to go to one of the SkySpark uh, analytic uh, classes. It's typically, I think it's like a two or a three day class. Um, they get you all set up on there. After that, you are, you're going to be able to, uh, to sell the product and, uh, and really do it. Um, and one of the cool things is, is basically, you know, if, if I had to like look at it and, you know, just look at, you know, your customer set and figure out 10 rules figure out 10 things that you want to look for. You know, the last thing you want to do is be like, Oh, I got to come out with, you know, 500 something rules, or I got to figure out how much, you know, KW per, per square foot, you know, when people, uh, you know, have a Dell computer or laptop in there, it's like, okay, just, just kind of back it off. Keep it simple to start. Like one of the biggest ones, uh, that, that I see, and you know, I see it around Atlanta a lot. Um, you've got these, um, these old, um, PIUs that still have to use, um, pneumatic, uh, pneumatic actuators. So, and you'll see that and you'll see, you know, you'll use a DDC controller goes to a, uh, goes to a transducer and then that sends the air pressure to the pneumatic actuator. And, you know, it, they, they have it that way because the cost to retrofit one of those is, you know, it's like four hours and, you know, maybe like a $300, $400 part. You guys posted something a long time ago. And I think Stromquist offered a retrofit part. Um, it's for those uh, to basically take that internal damper and then change it over to, you know, uh, an, an external. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was, it was trained. I wasn't sure if we were mentioning manufacturers or anything. No, so I remember that. Didn't, and we, uh, we saw a lot of that too. Yeah, that was, a, that was an excellent uh, demo and um, mm. very successful. But, you know, the, uh, to to kind of move things on, I don't know. Well, hang on real quick. I, it's kind of, if you don't mind, there's one other thing I wanted to sort of bring around because Brent, I think it was brilliant. You know, instead of write, writing all the rules, come up with 10 you, you, you can come up with. So for example, sure. yeah. for our property management people out there, you got building A and it is using 50,000 uh, KW per month. You got building B, it's using 25,000 KW a month. And you got building C, which is using 150,000 KW a month, which one is most energy efficient? Right. Or which and one uses the most energy? Well, and you... Oh, yeah, that answer. Yeah, I, mean, that, I don't know. <laughs> that's easy, but, you know, basically, it, you can kind of, you can organize the data because, you know, what if one is a single-story building? Exactly. One right. Story right. Building. How many square foot? How many people are occupied? So, you, and part exactly. of the reason I brought that up was you used a term earlier, which for our owners out there who might not think this way, I didn't think this way until it was explained to me. Part of what Brent's company is able to do is to normalize your data because, oddly enough, the small, the one with the least amount you're spending the least amount of money on might be the most energy inefficient. The one that you're spending the most on because it's maybe 10 times bigger might be your most energy efficient. So unless you can normalize it and what I mean by normalizing is taking random data points or data points, bringing them together and setting their criteria like square foot footage, occupancy times, uh, number of people in, in that. So that's a big part of that's got to be one of the first ones that you guys would go for. I would think if you got multiple facilities. Right. So, um, so, so I'll go, go back. It was just kind of the, the brief example with, with the damper. And I know I was kind of explaining some technical stuff on it, but it's, you know, that like a real, real simple rules, like, you know, and you can compare it, you know, how many VAVs, PIUs, things like that, kind of like you're talking about, but you know, the, the big ones that you can see, you know, a VAV, is it open at a hundred percent, not satisfying the CFM. So either we've got a mechanical problem, we got a design problem, you know, somewhere in the chain and also the biggest thing one of the things that i see the most money wasted on like with that particular style of box is this thing has electric heat strips in it so electric heat huge energy user i mean just unbelievable so it's got the heat going right trying to satisfy the space and you've got a bad damper bladder in there that's letting 600 
800 CFM through. So I'm simultaneously heating and cooling the space. I'm basically dehumidifying your space <laughs> and you get to pay for it as long as this thing is occupied. And, you know, put that over a 15 story building and let that happen, you know, a cu on a cup on each floor and just. Well, well, Eric, Eric, remember that our uh, first real com I become and you might Daryl Smith, Smith, right? Daryl Smith. And he said that uh, their biggest. Um, Why well, I, I got this one. Can I do this one? Okay. Please, because I don't. I, I normally I don't know. know much stuff, but I do know this. So, Brent Daryl Smith ran the Microsoft campus back when Kenny and I first met him, and this was the best example of alarms versus rules base that I ever heard. And what Daryl was saying was they had this huge campus, huge, huge energy bills. They never got an alarm because the Microsoft campus was the most comfortable campus you could be anywhere. All those buildings were comfortable. They put in a, a program similar to SkySpark. And they realized the reason their energy was so high and the reason nobody complained about the temperature was that their heating and cooling ran at the same time to maintain temperature. They had no idea that was happening until they put the analytics package in. So mm -hmm. then what happened consequently after that was, uh, you know, they fixed that problem. They started getting a lot of alarms and Bill Gates got mad at Daryl Smith. So there you have it. <laughs> Did you have anything you want to add to that, Kenny? I'm sorry. I, no, no, no. That was it. That was the whole thing. Was that uh, you, you, the, you know some of the things that they were saying is the valve, uh, the heating valve was uh, you know clogged, blocked open. You know it wasn't seating properly, so then it was leaving too much heat into the space, and then the air conditioning or the, the VAV uh, was letting cooling in. So the bottom line was that you could have no uh, alarms or no complaints. That you know we complained about the temperature being too hot, too cold, but that's not necessarily a good thing. So what they started to analyze uh, was if the state changes, doesn't change over a certain period of time, there's, there's reason for concern. Something yeah. should be going up and down based on different, uh, you know, the different uh, aspects of the building, different times of day, different whatever, but nothing should stay the same. No temperature should right. stay 72 for uh, longer than maybe like 60 minutes. And if it does, that would be one of the rules where you'd say, somebody needs to look at it. You probably got, you know, something's going on there that you said requires investigation. But, um, I am, I'm a little bit uh, concerned that we're, we're going to get uh, time uh, is slipping away. So we should throw in some of these posts to, to, to get more Brent's comments on. Yeah, Brent, this is part of the audition here now. Um, we're going to go through some posts of the week and, and you got to make, you have to make really astute comments about them. Okay. Not so astute, I don't want to press them. Cause you know, you're, you're a systems integrator and you, you bring like uh, a different the, perspective. Absolutely. Is this relevant to your world or not? You know, yeah, buddy. All right. What's what post you want to talk about for us? Let's no, no, I, 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 we'll just go you know, kind of lighthearted. Cause uh, you know, I, again, the, um, there are some you know nuggets to take away, and some of this is kind of you know superficial stuff. But the the next post we want to talk about uh, and get Brent's comments on is the the new facility manager uh, might be a robot, uh, and how will artificial intelligence affect your building? We know from Ken St. Clair that artificial intelligence is common; it's a real thing. How quickly the adoption rate is going to be, and whatever, or is it happening with or without our knowledge? Uh, and he calls it automated intelligence, not intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence. So, Brent, the question we'd ask you there is that uh, do, you, do you think that artificial intelligence has a foothold already? Uh, what's the adoption rate with, the, with your end of the world or your, from your perspective? Um, so, uh, in, in terms of, of running buildings right now, um, where we're at in, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, um, I haven't seen a, a whole lot of artificial in intelligence in uh in, in the particulars particular areas we're at um obviously that's the way i mean every, everything's moving that way you know whether i i we still really haven't seen a whole ton of you know a voice stuff come into you know the, the building automation world so i feel like you're going to see that come in and then you're going to see AI, but that's kind of the analytics thing too, is, you know, and we were talking about it earlier, you know, it used to be you'd pay somebody to monitor this and they would watch it. And now you have a computer that's doing it, you know, a, yeah. a, a program that, that just looks at, you know, it, it looks at rules, it, it compares the data and then it gives you an outcome. So, oh, so go ahead. So based on how you define artificial intelligence, in many cases, some of it's already there. It's just not called artificial intelligence. Exactly. Yeah, yeah to, 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 to the guy that was charging two grand a month to, to make the data, I mean, he's already been replaced by a robot, right? I know, which is, which is a shame. That'd be a sweet deal. So, Eric, uh, so I got it. Sudha Jam Jamthi. Okay, now, so the next It's post not Jamthi, Kenny. Jamthi is like, it's not jam, like J-A-M. It's Jamthi. It's a softer version. Okay, so 
if, if we're doing artificial intelligence, let's take this thing to the next level. And we have this very uh, intelligent futurist, uh, and she is the real McCoy. She is internationally, globally recognized for her her understanding and the visions that are coming, you know, what, what our world uh, is going to look like in five, 10, 15 years. But she did this thing on smart buildings and powering smart buildings with smart cars. And the whole idea is sustainable buildings, sustainable energy cars that are driving. And they're basically collecting uh, energy, putting in a battery. The car gets to the building that it works, uh, that's parked at and plugs in. And instead of the building powering the car up again, the car is powering the building up. And in emergency situations, you could, really exploit this because it's just moving energy you know cars are literally collecting energy and then moving them to where they need it and they can actually plug into a building um not not that you, we're going to see this anytime soon but what do you think that uh the, the atlanta for instance your metropolitan area is that is that kind of technology receptive do you see that i know that uh, with eric with your smart car your um tesla your Tesla, one of your biggest issues at first was the, the charging stations. You know, they could yeah. be busy. It might not be available. But, you know, it was, a, it was a trying that new technology. Does it fit? Do you see us moving uh, your end of the world there, uh, Brent, taking, adopting that kind of technology? Or, or is it kind of out there? Kind of like. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure had you asked the, uh, the question, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, like had you asked uh, when maybe Eric and my dad were working together a little bit, like, you know, hey, where do you think we're going to be in? 30 years with this in buildings it's like it's not going to be it's not, it's not going <laughs> to matter or all our cars going to be flying around anyway it's kind of look like <laughs> jetsons out there um oh well but, yeah to your point I, I mean i look at this thing every day and i marvel over i marvel over this uh, <laughs> iphone every day because i just i can't get over because my wife's german she talks to her sisters like we're talking you know across the street and it doesn't cost a dime that used to be my third yeah. biggest expense you know we had mortgage car and then phone Right. Well, you know, Kenny, I, Brent, I might, I might rephrase the question a little bit because, you know, I think the car was just sort of an example of the fact that you could use a battery to power a building. And Nissan actually did it with their corporate headquarter. And uh, Sutta Janthi talks a lot about, uh, <laughs> about the nice. fact that you can now contribute to the grid instead of just drawing off the grid. And I, I think a more germane sort of uh, uh, question might be, do you see a day where maybe the Batteries are powering the buildings. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, tech, technology continues to evolve into just things that you just never thought were possible. Kind of like, you know, like the analogy there of, uh, you know, thinking about a, a battery charging building. I mean, you know, I, absolutely it's possible. The, what, you know, <laughs> what Ken just talked about, you know, with that right there. I'm sure you guys saw him back in the... Uh, you know, maybe even the eighties, the early nineties, like what did the first cell phones look like? What did the first computers look like? Like mainframes hold gigantic right. rooms. And now this is more powerful than the first computer mainframe, huge rooms that yeah, were created. So. Well, and it is good. I, Eric, I'm really glad you cleaned that up for me. No, Cause no, I, 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 no, I, hang on, hang on. I'm not done yet. I've got I'm my, con my conspiracy theory, and then you can come back to you, Ken. So I have a conspiracy theory, Ken, uh, because Brent, you know, you guys are Johnson Controls is one of the lines you handle as well as Honeywell and Distech. Johnson Controls is one of the largest car battery manufacturers in the world, okay? So you start thinking about that, and then you put in the fact that Tesla developed something called the Powerwall right in California, what they, because you know, you could have the solar energy coming in, but you pretty much had to use it or lose it. With the power wall, you were able to store it, okay? So I think Johnson and Tesla are getting together right now. I think what's gonna happen is you're gonna have solar panels on the building. It's gonna come down to some sort of a power wall that will hold the charge, that will charge the battery, and then the battery will charge the building. Well, to Eric, to your point, I think, uh, and I'm glad you did it because I was thinking the same thing. We know that Johnson Controls made a major investment in batteries. And one of the scenarios we saw, Brent, was really cool was that, you know, uh, with the DC AC wars, remember what Eric and I used to cover the, the Westinghouse <laughs> versus, uh, you know, Tesla and how, uh, yeah. you know, it was a power station thing. Who could transmit the, the, the power the furthest? The AC won. But DC uh, now is coming back in. And many people are saying, why are we taking power, making it AC, and then converting it back to DC inside of a building? Since everything inside of the building is operating on DC, what about we put a big battery in the basement, in the, you know, some mechanical room or whatever, and we power it up. And from there, we power the entire building with 24 volts DC. 
and then you have power of the ethernet and we have all these really incredible ideas but so to your point and i agree with you 100 percent. it's not it's just a matter of when we we get the opportunity to deploy these technologies they're here it's just it's the economic uh, you know constrictions it's just the economic you know friction you gotta you gotta make money and people have to transition from one technology to the other but it doesn't mean it's not gonna happen it's just a question of when right so i i you know it it's really interesting to think about, um, you know, buildings doing that. Obviously, it'd be, you know, much easier, you know, as with anything, um, you know, if you're building a brand new building to be able to spec that stuff well, so, and, and then absorb it into the cost of, yeah. you know, of, of doing the building as opposed to looking at a building that has everything that is AC powered, whether, you know, lighting, HVAC equipment, you know, literally everything and being like, all right, we're going to rip all this stuff out. And then we're going to put all this in and it's going to cost you, you know, X and whoever owns the building or you know, manages the building is like, ah, no, we're not. Yeah, no, 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 it's a, it's a great point, Brandon. I know that uh, my father-in-law lives in New Mexico, right? And they used to subsidize solar panels, but then the electric company conspiracy theory started, you know, not making as much money. So they don't subsidize anymore. So now it's cost prohibitive to do it. But I tell you what, I think uh, I want to get back to Intech and your dad a little bit because your dad is one you of the- You got to be kidding me. Not a <laughs> Your dad's one of the brightest businessmen I know. And what your dad would say is if you want to, I've heard him say this over the years, you want to paint it blue, I'll paint it blue. You want a, ba you want a battery powered building? I'll give you a battery painted, battery powered building, right? So- uh, Right. Uh, and, and, I, and I think at the end of the day, it's, this is, you know, a lot of conjecture on our part. It's fun to talk about, but at the end of the day, uh, what's going to make the most sense for the owners is what they're going to do. Well, right. yeah, I, uh, I, my favorite ones are listen to Paul Oswald and listen to uh, George Thomas from Contemporary Controls. These guys are the more senior uh, faculty in our, in our industry. And they say, you know, we keep talking about this, absolutely wild off the wall technology when we still don't fix belts and we still don't do the most <laughs> primordial maintenance you need, uh, you know, and keeping the motors running and stuff like that. So there's, I think what you have to do is you have to keep one foot on, you know, it's, it's, it's tectonics. It's moving it's shifting when it applies. Tectonics. Yeah. Plate tectonics. There we go. Oh, there's a vocabulary. There we go. Yeah. All right. Hey, man, there's one. Brent, we still don't have a vocabulary word from you yet. Yeah, we I do. Got you, we got it. Got Alarm shape. fatigue. Oh, alarm fatigue. That's right. I'm sorry. I, I, I circled that. When you said that, I, I will give you credit. When I like something and somebody says something cool, I write it down. And at the end of it, when we have to write the show notes up or whatever, I can run through all these little circled nuggets there. And alarm fatigue is circled. We're okay. going to we're gonna take this thing into a macro level again. And we're going to shift gears into security, cybersecurity. We're going to go into your version of cybersecurity. How often you bump into it? What is it? What does it scare you to death? Or you got you to gotta handle on it? What's, what's going on? from your perspective? Um, you know, cybersecurity, obviously, you know, yeah, extremely important. I would say as important as, uh, as anything you're, you're really doing in a building, you know, as long as you know, you're not, uh, when you're putting in controls, you're not just absolutely wrecking the equipment. What's the, the other thing, keeping, you know, un unauthorized, you know, people from, from entering your site. Um, if you can isolate it, that, and that's the biggest thing was cybersecurity, uh, that I'm kind of seeing um, from our end is things need to be isolated. Um, so like you really do, you need to have like, you know, for your HVAC, building automation, uh, security access, all that stuff, um, like to isolate it if you can on, on separate networks. I mean, you know, you don't have to look far uh, with different, you know, cybersecurity issues and large retailers, whether it's through, you know, the credit card scanners or, you know, <laughs> however these uh, the hackers get in to access, you know, a bunch of people's personal data at places. Like, it's just kind of like, holy crap. I, I thought that was uh, very unimportant. This thing just turns the lights on, turns the lights off. And now they've got access to, you know, social security numbers have all the data that we're keeping over here. So um, there's some really cool products out there. Um, like, you know, I won that y'all rep, uh, that, uh, Tossie box. yeah, that, that's it. I, I really like that. Um, you want to talk about security? Like that is, that, that is the deal. Um, the, the ease access is, you know, not as much like, you know, you can't just start grabbing a bunch of random devices. 
and and doing it there's got to be a little bit more prep work but you want to talk about secure and uh and manage like that is awesome so yeah. and it's, so the, it's right. not it's not that expensive the it people because I, I guess the part of the question would be do, are you running it up when you put a system in are the it people now more concerned and they come to you and say you're going to try to do what to my network or i know you guys work on a different sort of size building and stuff like that but uh yeah, uh, I actually had a meeting with uh, with an IT manager um, just just recently, within the last couple of weeks, and he was wanting to know, like, uh, you know, what are you going to do, or how does this need to be set up, and everything like that. And uh, it's a it's a good conversation to be able to have with them in person. Like, don't try and pass it off through someone else that isn't going to be working on the technical side because it's just th then things get misinterpreted and people right. get defensive about you're not putting this on my network. Yeah, and, and all this, uh, you know, turns into like a little peeing contest, right? <laughs> when, you, when you don't need it, um, it, it's just you know a good conversation to have, and that's one of the things Tritium does a good job with is you know they have uh, they've got it out there. I'm not sure what the most updated version is, but it's you know called the hardening guide, which uh, um, basically goes through and it'll tell you how to most securely set up your system. And if you can go through that with an i with an IT you know manager or or whoever, then it, everybody can be comfortable. All the, the data can all be out there. And then, you know, you make sure that you're putting in the, you know, most secure option. You know, it's so ironic you said that because I sent that to somebody this morning. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, the issues were on the audit trails and, and, and about, you know, uh, who gets into the system. And, and I, the one I have is the Niagara for hardening. It's from uh, 628, 2018. So I'm sure there's one uh, okay. more recent than that, but uh, you're exactly right. It's a, uh, I think it's a 48 page document. Uh, let's see. Yeah. And it really goes, it deep dives into it, 42 pages. So, um, but what we have uh, for, for the control trends community is we have a responsibility to keep, keep cybersecurity as a current trend, as a top trend. Uh, we post the NIST release, NIST, and they give us, you know, the checklists to take people on an individual level, an organizational level, uh, a, a, you know, a corporate level, and then a city level. So we have two posts that I just want to bring them up real quick. One is the uh, Schneider Electric has a um, cybersecurity uh, webinar. You can sign up for it, and it has a, a lot of great information. And then two for the people that are really in the business di diving deep, we have a smart and secure city and community challenge expo in Washington, DC, July 10th and 11, uh, 12th. And it's about security, cybersecurity on a, on a macro level. So that NIST, the Gov US Department of Homeland Security and Sciences and Technology are, they're basically the sponsors of it. It's a free, registration's free, but you have to pre-register. It's required for attendance. You can't just walk in. They're online and we have a hot button to it. But so, Cybersecurity, you're right. So Brent, Brent, you just hit three correct answers in a row. So we're going to go, Brent. Appreciate and, it. And, and cybersecurity is one. It's as important as anything else we're, 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 we're working with now. If we, we have to have a responsibility, we have to own that responsibility and learn about it. We don't necessarily have the solution for it, but we can be part of the solution or part of the problem. Well right. said, Kenneth. Well said. Well, listen, dude, uh, let's, let's talk about a couple more things, a couple of other events, and then we're probably going to need to hop off here. But uh, where, Brent, you got to talk to your dad about this because you want to go to this conference. <laughs> easy I.O., easy I.O., easy I.O. They call it easy for you. It's going to be, what are the dates on easy I.O., Ken? You want to go to Amsterdam with us, Brent? <laughs> yes. Sounds yes. great. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, it's, it's May uh, 17th through the 19th, and it's going to be in Amsterdam, and it's going to be an extraordinary event. We're, we're taking the, the lid off this thing now because uh, there's um, the importance of it is, is growing. Uh, what Easy Eye is doing is they're going to really uh, walk us through the roadmap, and, and they've been the innovators. They've probably been the strongest leading innovator company uh, of all of uh, you know, the recent companies for just the, the ability to get things done quickly, put a FS, a, a server-sized controller inside of a regular, uh, you know, fit uh, the build of a, of a, you know, basically a controller uh, that but it's has, you know, core, four core processors, quad core processors, and, and, and it's just a new paradigm. Uh, it's and, shaping and, all the other vendors. And, and they're doing something <laughs> incredible now. They're kind of, they're going to reduce it. They're going to make an FS20. So uh, it's going right. to be smaller, uh, compact. It's going to have the same formidability. It's just cost less money. And so 
they do the wireless thing. So they got the FTO4 coming out. Now this thing's a clever, amazing thing. Lim Hoon Chat came up with some very, very yeah. interesting things. No, Kenny, you're, you're, you're so right about the technology, but listen, let's focus on the event itself because these guys know how to throw a party. Where else <laughs> can you go to Europe, okay, and write it off on your taxes? These guys, you'll learn stuff, but, man, we've been to all the major soccer stadiums. I mean, these guys know how to throw a party. It is the best time you'll have. You'll learn a lot. You'll meet integrators from all around the world. Hell, Kenny, Brett, and I are going to be there. Maybe Aaron Gork will even show up if he gets out of bed long enough to uh, – see what's going on here but uh but so that's going on we got that we got real com ibcon coming up kenny in nashville tennessee and then we've got we, the affor affirmation oh, let me, let me Aff hang on the aforementioned uh haystack connect well hey, well we gotta start we gotta start at the beginning here we got national uh, nfm who are you god what do you mean we have to start at the beginning this we is got, we, march 26 this week we got a major event down in baltimore and anybody close to that should go to it it's one of the best uh, okay. you know, conventions, uh, in, in our eastern part of the country. And it's great for networking, got great training. Uh, it starts this week. We have controls con coming up May 2nd through the 4th up there in Detroit. And I'll tell you what, that's another one. We have a discount code, put in control trends when you register. Then we go to project Haystack. Okay. May 17th and 18th. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. May. I have, we just had the post up. So, uh, it's on the site. You can go to the site and check it out. But I'm just uh, with my 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 emphasis is on bang bang bang. But the um, it's going to be uh, at a resort area too. That's extraordinary. Anyhow, you're right. It's at the um, Paradise Island. Yeah, Paradise Island, uh, and uh, it's May 13th through the 15th. There you go. So it's it's West Coast. Right, okay. right, right, right. Before we go to go to Holland. Hey. Amsterdam, but but it, last but not least, June 11th through the 14th, Realcom IBCon, that's going to be in Nashville, Tennessee, and we also have a Controls Trends code coming from Jim Young, and the <coughs> excuse me Howard Berger and Lisa Woods too. So we're, we're excited about it because we're serving as a pivot point for all this this incredible information. Obviously, <coughs> people can't make it to all of them. But that's where you need to do your homework. If you're an integrator and you're learning about this stuff, uh, you know you might want to go to Haystack because you can start using that templating. And if you're if you're into the integration and you want to work with the latest and greatest set of tools, you need to get the EasyIO's Global World Conference. You get the additional benefit of some travel, and they do have a spectacular two-day program. Uh, and then if you're in the real estate business and you're servicing people that make you know that need to know how they can make uh, a smarter, more intelligent, more connected building, then you need to go to Realcom. So right. It, and uh, hang on, there's one more, Kenny. Mm -hmm. Very well done, Brad. That was nicely done. Okay, very succinct to the point. I love it. Now, if you need an integrator to put all this great technology in, we know a pretty good one in Atlanta named Entech. Brent, tell us how people get hold of Entech and and some of the things you guys do. Uh, get, to get a hold of Intech, uh, you know, uh, go to our website, all the contact information, um, or call Eric and he'll yeah. get you right over to I'll us. Um, but, uh, but what we do is, uh, we try to offer, you know, an, an all in one, uh, solution. You know, we, we like to think, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit of everything. We'll, we'll do anything that you'll let us do. You know, kind of like you said before, you want me to paint it green, I'll paint it green. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, you know, we do a the HVAC controls, uh, card, ac card access, integrating those systems together, uh, and then you know, the mechanical HVAC, uh, you know, do all that systems analytics, um, you know, we, we try and be, you know, either an all in one solution, or, you know, p pick one, you know, extremely happy with your mechanical company, we'd love to do your controls, vice right. versa. Well, the other thing too, Brent, and I, I want to bring up, uh, your dad and your company has done more national account work. So if you're a big box or even a little box retailer that has multiple locations across the United States, your dad's been doing that for the last 40 years with major accounts. So, you know, a lot of times people, they, they like a system, they want something put in. And uh, uh, I'm going to tell a story about your dad before we go. You'll like this, Kenny. Uh, all across the country. So you guys do national accounts as well and do a great job with that. So here's the story. How many of you know who Dr. Laura is? I don't. 
Oh nope. God, she had to talk to us. It's like a battle axe. It's like, you know, you've got to be tough. You've got to do this. And you, you know, kind of like a Dr. Phil on steroids. Although Dr. Phil is kind of cuter than she is. But uh, <laughs> so anyway, your dad is doing a Borders bookstore. And Dr. Laura is there doing a book signing. And your dad's oh. up on a ladder working, <laughs> working on a VAV box. And all of a sudden he hears this voice. Hey, you come over here and move these books. And he kind of looks down and he goes, it was Dr. Laura. She's asking me to go do some stuff. So I just waved at her, went right back up and continued what I was doing. <laughs> you ever get a chance to talk to Brent's dad, Pat Burroughs, one of the funniest guys in the industry, one of the best storytellers. Brent, man, thank you so much for being on the show this week. Very excited about what you and Aaron are going to come up with. Uh, Aaron's episode seven is up on Control, uh, Control Talk, or excuse me, on ControlTrends.com. It was a great episode. And I guess Starting at episode eight, we'll probably be you and him working together. So excited about that. And I think the control trends community is lucky to have you on board. So thank you for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Look, looking forward. Looking All right. Forward. So now, now I know you normally listen to the podcast, so we got to practice this outro here. Wait, no, no. We got to do two more things real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. This is part of the show. Okay, go ahead. Well, anyhow, uh, we do have a shout out. Uh, we want to shout out to Bill Schaefer. Uh, he commented on the uh, Scott Cochran um article that we posted in Scott's comments and the, you know, just to give you an idea of the flavor and, and the interesting inputs we get for control trends. It said, I read Scott Cochran's article on automated buildings. I've been involved in a couple of projects where temporary networks were necessary. So I found Stanford solution. Interesting. The article left me with a couple of questions and thoughts about using IP controllers versus MSTP controllers and how vendors and IT departments handle them. And so we have uh, an opportunity for, uh, we, we forwarded that to Scott for a uh, response, but we invite all our control trends community to please, these are the kind of co conversations and dialogues we love to have because everybody benefits from it. You might get your own little answer. Uh, you know, you might get your own private answer or, or your own interest answer uh, responded to, but uh, we all benefit from it. And then last but not least, I want to compliment Eric Stromquist, who's the Whoa. most hardest working, creative innovative <laughs> social media guy out there eric you put up four youtube videos tell us tell us about each one real quick one one minute or less on each one of them well i can't really remember all but it, as we said on the show last week we can get content up quicker on the youtube channel so brent i don't know about you but you know i learn a lot from youtube so we get a lot of questions like for example we have one on what's the difference between two-way and three-way vowels which a guy like you knows but we created a video for that uh, and so you, we're going to be putting more and more YouTube content up here. So please subscribe to the channel. We're able to get it up quicker than we're, we are sometimes to do a post, but yeah, I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a social media guy, right? I'm right. A, well, well done. I mean, have you seen some of the Instagram models and stuff like that? I mean, do you want to know why I'm doing it? No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Doing All right, Brent. We got to the point where it's TMI and, and we just went off the, the went off the rails again. No, no, are you going to no, tell me no. to edit this? Because if you are, if you're going to say this is an edit point, whoever bet it was going to happen early in the show just lost a lot of money. <laughs> I didn't bet. I didn't bet. I, knew no, I know you don't bet. I mean, they bet on us with this interaction, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, right. it's been an interesting show, Brent. Thank you very much. And, and again, I, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you stepping on my outro here, buddy? No, I just, this is my I outro. Okay. I, I, Brent, I, I, you need to practice here. Okay. Do your part. Cause I know you listen to the podcast is you got to put your thumbs up and say indeed like this when it's time. Okay. Let's see. Thumbs up. Yeah. Like this. All right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Not yet, but you'll know when, when, when Kenny goes indeed, you go indeed. Okay. Here we go. All right. So that's it. Another episode of control talk. Now your smart buildings, video and podcast. Thank you so much to our guest, Brent Burroughs from Intech. And Brent, we're so glad to have you on board with the Control Trends community. We're lucky to have you, brother. So uh, we appreciate that. So with that, remember, be bold, stay in control, and stay relevant. Indeed, Eric. Oh, hang on. Brent, you got to – when I say stay relevant, <laughs> okay, let's just take two. Okay. okay. All right. Sure. And stay relevant. Indeed, Eric. Brent, you're a little slow. Come on, you got show show the shirt you got. You're wearing a Clemson shirt now. Come on, you guys are national champions. You can't let Kenny outdraw you. On you. Okay. All right, all right. And be relevant. Indeed, Eric. Indeed. Indeed, Kenny and Brent. Right.